Evening all. Um, first of all, I'd like to start with an apology. Now, I was recently on um, Unpopular Opinions as a guest, and uh, my microphone was causing problems for everyone. Um, basically, uh, I had it on, and there was this terrible echo, and it was uh, disrupting the chat. And um, I was trying to figure out for over an hour what was causing this. Um, <laughs> I was trying tweaking the settings, and it turned out um, my microphone levels were set to 90. So um, for the last 15 minutes, I pulled it down to 30, and um, it seemed to solve the problem. Um, but for a while, I had, um, either myself or academic agent were um, muting me, and um, I could only turn the microphone off when I wanted to say, some, say something, I turned the microphone on, and then I would have to turn it off when I wasn't speaking. Uh, and, um, but anyway, problem solved, and next time I will check... Um, the microphone levels before I go live. I came in late anyway, because oh, domestic stuff anyway. So, um, yeah, just want to preface that. Sorry, I do have working technology. I just had it all set to the wrong levels. Anyway, I want to do a response to um, a couple of videos I've seen this week, which I thought were very good. One is Irate Bear's um, piece on Russell Howard and free speech. Another one was Paul Joseph Watson's um, video on why they hate PewDiePie. And I think there's um, those two videos and those two people, PewDiePie and Russell Howard, kind of illustrate um, the divide between the mainstream media and internet entertainment uh, and what's going on behind the scenes. So Russell Howard, I think it's fair to describe him as a very conventional, orthodox style of stand-up comedian, the kind that we've been... Um, familiar with, I'd say for about 30 years, he's kind of following in the wake of what Ben Elton started, he's just a kind of current, pardon me, iteration, um, sometimes he's more milk toast than Ben Elton in his pomp, but now he's kind of taking on a more political thing, which is what he was doing with the, his free speech um, routine, which was absolutely awful and convoluted and contradicted itself, as I wrote there. Um, gives an example, but the thing about um, Russell Howard is that his path to his fame and where he is now is a very conventional, well-trodden path, and it's the path that mainstream media likes. So he starts off as a stand-up comedian in the clubs. He's doing the clubs that he's supposed to be doing that will get him attention, and um, smaller clubs to bigger clubs to even bigger clubs. So he's doing the club circuit with a lot of other stand-up comics. Then he goes to Edinburgh Fringe to do a show. He gets notice, uh, gets an agent. Then that gets him access to the kind of panel shows on BBC Radio and on BBC Television where he's a guest on a panel show. All he has to do is crack out a few kind of um, topical um, zingers. And um, if he does well enough on that and he's chirpy enough and cocky enough, he gets his own mainstream television show eventually. And so that's the conventional way. It's every comic that you see on the BBC has trodden that path. PewDiePie is an exception. He's built up a following playing entirely by his own rules, but using a, a vastly different paradigm um, and one largely of his own making. And the rest of us kind of adopt um, some of his... Uh, techniques and build our followings by being our own writers, our own editors, our own producers. <clears throat> this is the PewDiePie formula. He doesn't do the clubs, he doesn't have to do the Edinburgh Fringe, he doesn't have to get an agent and please um, powers that be. He just is himself with his own brand. He's not even a, um, a stand-up comic. He, he combines comedy, commentary, video gaming... Um, he has his online persona through which he's built up entirely by himself and he's his own um, editor. And um, so, and, and it's the PewDiePie package. It, it's hard to pigeonhole him um, in, a, in any, as a category. He's a YouTuber, but that does, it doesn't even begin to describe what PewDiePie does. Now, this represents um, a challenge to... The Order, not just PewDiePie, Paul Joseph Watson himself, Sargon of Akkad, um, countless others, Stephen Crowder even. These are people that are doing 
their own thing, their own editors, and um, using this different paradigm. But what they're saying, and the enter- uh, you know, PewDiePie is extremely entertaining, and I think even the the child friendly um, people that kind of do what he does. I'm thinking of Stampy Longhead and I Ballistic Squid, Dant EDM, are kind of doing. You know, they've they've stumbled upon a formula, and it really resonates. With people, I mean, my my kids love Stampy, Squiddy, and Dan TDM. Um, I enjoy um, YouTubers now more more than mainstream television. And what happens is that they, um, because the the para- the the mainstream media can't get their heads around this paradigm, and also it, it breaks the chain. So, if PewDiePie, for example, was to get his own BBC TV show. What would that look like? Well, now you, you've dispensed with having to go to the clubs and you've dispensed having to do the Edinburgh Fringe and you've dispensed with the need to be on a a, a panel show. So you're actually, actually affecting the food chain, as it were. You know, you can just... If, if his channel becomes so popular that mainstream television said, well, we'll give you your own show, you've just bypassed all the steps everybody else has had to take. Um... And I would argue, and I've been arguing for years, why is that the only route to mainstream stardom? Not that PewDiePie needs mainstream stardom anymore, but there are other people lower down on the, the totem pole. Um, I would say that so watching Dan TDM is far more um, enjoyable than watching a lot of CBBCs for, for you know uh, for young people. I think it, he's, he is far more funny and um so and they break the mold and this represents a threat because it doesn't it's not just the mainstream media having their noses put out a joint that people can become so popular by doing their own thing it as i said it affects the food chain affects the clubs it affects the edinburgh fringe it affects the the network of agents and deals that are being done to get certain people onto television and to become famous um now, back in 2008, I was speaking to a uh, BBC producer because my team were, I had a team of about a dozen writers and um, we were coming up with a lot of comedy sketches, a lot of comedy ideas and ideas for programmes and things. And we were trying to pitch them, but we had come from the background of the internet. Um, about a third of the team weren't even um, film and TV industry professionals. There were people who had nine to five office jobs and they just happened to write comedy in their spare time. Uh, they're wonderfully funny people. And I was coming from a background of um, film and TV production outside of network television. I have worked on a couple of network television shows uh, in my career. Um, but, uh, you know, I was I was mainly working in the independent um, film sector. Um, and you weren't supposed to do that. You People say... Um, well, producers would say, um, do you have a stand-up routine? Do you, are you part of a comedy troupe? And I said, well, no, no, I'm, a, I'm an assistant director and I sometimes direct things and I like writing things. And I've got a team of writers and, and it just sailed straight over their heads. Well, they didn't understand the internet. And I said to um, a BBC producer who I was at university with, I said, uh, well, well, what do you think of people um, doing releasing their own material on the internet? Um, do you think you could work with those people? And he said, well, we just don't understand them. You know, we don't. We, we know that these comedians and these writers and creators are out there on the internet and using YouTube and other um, Vimeo and um, platforms like that, but we just don't understand, you know, where they're coming from. And, and that's the thing. If you're a, a YouTuber or, or you're creating stuff and uploading them onto the internet, they don't know who you are. The, th- the thing about Russell Howard and other comics who get onto television, they've been weeded out, you know, for acceptability. You know, the 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 ones that a um, little bit too um, independent get weeded out. So um, even even so-called edgy comedians like Frankie Boyle have been cultivated through a system. Okay, they get spotted at the clubs. Um, so they ask their peers, they ask the club managers, well, what do they like to work with? And when they're at the Edinburgh Fringe, you know, what, what's it like to work with them? What's it, so they're, they're weeding out um, true independence. You know, can this person fit into our format? Can this person 
um, do television? Can it do it our way? So it's hardly surprising that when you see the uh, Twitter feeds of some of these uh, celebrities or some of their uh, these comedians and some of their um, interviews that they do, that they hold very um, elitist, very um, groucho club, um, you know, London centric lovey talk because they've been approved by that system, taken into that system and told, well, you know, if you play by the rules, you get your telly show. If you are too on edge, if you're too independent, if you don't sing from the hymn sheet, you know, you don't get your TV show, right? <laughs> you, you're, you're out, you're out back in, in clubland. Um, this partially explains why we don't see a lot of Lee Hurst on our TV screens. Uh, much anymore and and the whole thing is that PewDiePie is the slap in the face you know because he hasn't tugged his four locks and paid his dues on the established circuit um and I I know this because I I've, I've a few years ago I was pitching scripts and stuff to producers and they weren't complaining about the quality of the scripts that the team I was working with um, we're doing. Um, I, I mean, I was told the sketch show is dead. This was back in 2012. I was told sketch comedy is dead. You know, don't even waste your time. Have you got something that's like workplace sitcom? You know, um, can you put, can you make it the cast diverse? Can you do that? You know, it's all this stuff. Um, but the moment I said, well, you know, we work in a, uh, as a group of writers and, um, film technicians who are putting this together and we, um, when we make stuff, we put it on YouTube and the internet, they just would glaze over. Their eyes would glaze over. These are producers from Sky, BBC, Channel 4. Didn't want to know. As soon as you said internet, did not want to know. I said, oh, are you doing an Edinburgh show? Well, we're not really actors, so we're not doing an Edinburgh show. Um, and then, boom. You know, the, the eyes would glaze over. So that's um, explaining you know, why... Uh, the, the the strange examples of between Russell Howard and PewDiePie, um, and um, to explain why the mainstream media don't like PewDiePie, it's not it's not so much a conspiracy. It's more the fact that mainstream media just does not understand the internet, and to them, we the content creators are the great unwashed, and there's no system of scrubbing us clean. Um, so that's all for now. Um, microphone set to 25 and I will see you um, probably on this channel. I doubt if I'm ever going back on unpopular opinions. I think the yeah, microphone incident has, has nixed that one. But um, I'll see you around in Internet land somewhere. OK, have a good night.